Hey, what's going on guys? This is Matt. And today I want to talk about sparging. Uh, lately, I've been trying to sparge. Uh, and if you're unfamiliar with sparging, all that means is when you're done with your mash, you rinse the grains with hot water, usually around 170 degrees, your mash out temperature. And the idea of that is to rinse the residual sugars off of the grain bed and put them in your kettle. That's all sparging is. And typically what I've been doing for my Bruna bag system is not sparge. And all that means is instead of rinsing the grains, I just pull the mash basket out and I set them to the side. There's no rinsing. When you're not sparging, really the only difference is, is you're, you're doing full volume mashes. So there's usually more liquid in your kettle when you're mashing instead of using less liquid in your mash and then rinsing with sparge water. What made me want to start sparging is I wanted to see what type of efficiencies I could expect with using the claw hammer system when you actually do a sparge. I also wanted to test something and I'm always trying to find ways to save time on brew day and really focus times where I'll see the most impact. And a traditional sparge will actually take a decent amount of time. You have to collect a decent volume of water. You have to measure out brewing salts for your a sparge addition. Um, you need to heat up that water to your mash out temperature to 170 degrees. Um, and then a good sparge will actually take a decent amount of time. So I wanted to try a few batches with doing a traditional sparge the proper way. And then I also wanted to try a lazy way of doing it, which is a cold sparge. Uh, if you're unfamiliar with a cold sparge, all that means is you're just doing a sparge with room temperature water. So around 70 to 80 degree degrees uh, in Michigan here. But I'm actually even taking it a step further of making it even more lazy. I'm not going to be doing uh, any salt additions to my sparge water and I'm only going to be sparging with one gallon of water. Not only that is instead of actually taking the time to put one inch of headspace above my grain bed, I'm just going to dump it in and see what type of efficiencies I can expect. I actually for the last four brew days have been sparging two brew days with a proper sparge, and then two days with a lazy cold sparge method. And I have some numbers to share about what types of efficiencies you can expect when doing these two methods. Now keep in mind that the sample size is very, very small. Um, I've been doing non-sparge methods for a few years now, and this system is very capable at producing around 60% efficiencies. I'm confident when I say that number because I've done countless batches without sparging and it's around those numbers, give or take a point or two. I wanted to try a proper sparge with two batches and then I also wanted to do a um, cold sparge with two batches as well and then compare the numbers to see what I'd like to do moving forward. When doing research for this video, I also saw that Brulosophy actually did the same experiment. They actually were not able to tell the difference, the, the people doing the experiment and then the testers they will not be able to taste a perceivable difference between the two samples of a traditional sparge and a cold sparge method. So that even made me more interested in trying this experiment to see if I could save time and also increase my efficiencies as well. For the two beers that I did a proper sparge, it was my Smash Galaxy IPA. And then I also did a, a proper sparge with my Irish stout. For my cold sparge, I did this with my sour. And then I also did this with a light lager. That video is not out on my channel yet, but you can expect that video in the next few weeks. Now to talk about my pre-boil gravity readings. I'm going to read off a sheet here, so bear with me. So for my Smash IPA, I got 75%. And then my Irish, I got an 81%. So it averages out to around... 78%. My sour got around 74%. And then my light lager got 71% efficiencies. And again, that is just with a gallon of cold water that I just dump on top. So that averages out to around 72.5%. So it's around 5% difference from these two experiments. And actually, if you look at the Brulosophy article, I'll note down in the information section below, they actually had relatively similar results where their proper sparge had better efficiencies than their cold sparge but they weren't able to tell the difference when tasting the two beers compared. Now I wanna talk about some uh, benefits and concerns that some people might have and some misconceptions around um, sparging with cold water. First of all, I wanna go over concerns. The first thing is increasing the length of time to heat up to a boil. And that is true. Now I tried to mitigate this by only sparging with one gallon of water. And when you're using a only one gallon of water for your sparge, you're actually mashing with a lot more water. So there's a lot more hot water than there is cold water going in. 
Also, the grain is naturally around 170 degrees, which you're pouring 70 degree water over. So that is also going to decrease the temperature of the grain and increase the temperature of the water when, before uh, it actually hits in your kettle. So yes, it will increase the length of boil time, but ideally the, the plan is to just put just enough to rinse the grains off like a gallon and then just keep it at that to hopefully not decrease the amount of boil time to an unreasonable amount of time. Another concern is some people might say hot water is better at rinsing grain than cold water. And initially I thought the same thing, but looking back at the Brulosophy article, uh, he actually noted that there's no actual evidence to suggest that hot water does a better job at rinsing sugars off grains than cold water does. Another concern is that you're gonna get worse efficiency numbers when using cold water versus hot water. And from my experiment, that does seem to be true. And also based on Brulosophy's article, that also seems to be true. But there are a lot of commercial breweries to save time actually use cold sparging. And if commercial breweries are willing to implement the cold sparging process to save time, you can see that it obviously doesn't cost them too much money at the end of the day with the loss of efficiency. So it's nothing to be too concerned with. Also with home brewing, the extra few percent you're gonna get from the massive time investment that you're gonna take to, from doing a proper sparge to a cold sparge is probably not worth our time. Next, I wanna talk about a few benefits that cold sparging has over traditional sparging. The first thing is to reduce risk of tannin extraction. But according to a lot of articles and books that you have a risk of tannin extraction in your mash if your mash is too hot or you sparge with water that's too hot. And obviously sparging with cold water, that's not gonna be a problem. Also, it saves a lot of time and effort. When I was doing the traditional sparge, I had to measure out my brewing salts. I had to run upstairs and heat up a bunch of water, which on my uh, stove took around 30 to 40 minutes to get to 170 due to the volume. And then also the traditional sparge takes a lot of time. Now you are just waiting for the water to heat up anyway. So overall, from start to finish, your brew day might not feel any longer but you are a lot busier during your brew day, which depending on what you have in life going on, if you have kids or family or friends around, it may be pretty inconvenient to do a traditional sparge. The lazy cold sparge method that I've been doing, um, it's just literally just a gallon of water you just dump on top. You don't worry about the inch of headspace. You don't worry about brewing salt. You just dump it on and see how what you get. Um, so obviously you save a lot of time and a lot of effort on brew day. And the last benefit I wanna talk about is it actually should make the mash tun easier to clean. I didn't actually know this. I figured it'd be easier to clean a warm mash bed than it would be a cold one. But doing some research, I actually saw that a lot of breweries using cold sparging methods, their mash tun is actually easier to clean and faster to clean if the mash is cooler and not hotter. But anyway, guys, that really concludes the topic of cold sparging. I'm gonna continue sparging the cold and lazy way because I like to save time. And also it seems like a very quick and easy way to get another 10 to 15 points of efficiency with little to no effort on my part. Thanks for watching guys, and I'll see you in the next one. Cheers.